hiking the Batona. Just uh, checking things out. Pretty good. It's going pretty smooth. Got this new Atmos 65 on my back. Feels pretty good considering I'm uh, carrying 37 pounds of weight. So, uh, pretty excited. I go into it. Guys, just shy of uh, two hours in on the trail. Um, about almost three miles. Somebody actually went through and uh, put up these uh, signs out there, if you can see them. See how it says uh, 50? Ah, I'll snap a picture of it. But yeah, it's uh, 50 miles. You know, for some reason it's uh, miles uh, backwards. Probably the person that did it uh, hikes the other way more often. But uh, yeah, 2.7 miles in and an hour and a half so that's a uh, that's really good timing I'll show you a little bit of this area around here you know it's the Batona and not very mountainous you see there's still pretty decent sized yeah hills maybe 80 feet in elevation but it gives you that that feeling, you know, like when you're going around the side of a, a mountain, kind of gives you that little bit of feeling, even being out here in the pines. So, I enjoy this part. Alright, so I'm uh, halfway through my hike today. About six miles I got done. I'm going to try to do, you know, between 10 and 12. So, I decided to stop here and uh, rest a little bit. There's my pack and everything, but check that out. Inu Sub 7. Hanging up with some paracord. So it's super lightweight, even with the paracord and the Inu. I'm only carrying 7.5 ounces. Well worth it to me. Well worth it. And then I picked a nice little clearing out here, so the trail's only like 30 feet to my left, but I got a nice little spot here. So, I'm going to go relax a little bit. Just got to uh, Peckham Pond. Should be, it says 8 miles on the map, but those trail markers that somebody put up it says 8.7 with all the, you know, uh, reroutes of the pack, uh, the Batona Trail. I believe that those, those are correct. That's why somebody hung them up. But this is uh, about 8.7, I would say, and this is Peckham Pond. Alright, this is uh, one of my refill spots, so I'm going to fill up uh, one of my Nalgene's and then I'll be on my way. Just want to show you this part of the, the trail. It's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. I'm just over past 72 and uh, it's like jumping across all these uh, boards here. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Done for the day. Did a little over 10 miles. Um, set up camp. A little tired. Um, yeah. But uh, got the campsite here. About to make some food. I'll show you that. I mean, I really got lucky with this spot. I mean, perfect clearing. Be able to see the stars tonight. Excited to get some sleep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, talk to you. So it's the uh, morning of day two. Uh, a little chilly, really chilly, actually. Um, I'm actually pretty cold right now. Um, it was uh, had down like 50 last night. Uh, my bag in there is rated 450. Uh, and it kept me warm. I mean, it's definitely warmer than just standing around doing nothing. But, uh, 
Definitely the lower limits of it. He even said 50s, the lower limits. More of like a summer bag. And uh, tonight's, last night was going to be the coldest night. So every night from here on out will be warmer. So I should be warmer. But as you see, I slept with no rain fly, which is actually one of the first things, first times I've ever done that. And, you know, I was able to see the stars all night. But it gets really cold, really cold in there. So tomorrow I probably won't be doing that. Or I mean, tonight I won't be doing that. So. We're going to start uh, getting moving around to get warm. All right. Talk to you guys. All right, about an hour, a uh, half hour, 45 minutes into, uh, you know, day two here. Uh, I'm no longer in what I call Lebanon, but, you know, Bri Brennan T. Burns State Forest. And now I'm into uh, Franklin Preserve. Um, it's about 7.2 miles through this preserve. And then I'll be at the Potona Camp. And... I think today I'll take a lighter day and that's where I'll I'll make camp for the night. Alright, about an hour and hour and a half or so and I just want to show you this section right here. I mean literally that is the trail. I mean this stuff around you is six or eight foot tall. The reason why I carry K bar machete and I have it on my trekking pole spot there on the stow and go aspect just because you never know what you could end up uh, creeping up on you know being this thick well got a little bridge here and uh, it looks like it's been washed out so this is gonna be a little bit difficult just gotta be careful don't wanna go in the water there. It looks like it's pretty deep. Maybe three foot. So I'm going to go at it. Try it out. So I just uh, purified some uh, or I should say filtered some water over from uh, this this lake over here. Um, thought I'd be at camp a little sooner, so um, this is kind of more just as a backup because there's a well at where I'm going, but this is the lake I took it from. Uh, specifically right down there. This was the uh, cleanest spot that I could find, but uh, as you can see, it's cedar water, so it's still a uh, it still stays yellow, I'll show it to you. So that's uh, the water. But it's steery penned and, and, you know, so it's filtered to get all the sediment out, which is technically 99.99 good. And then I uh, use a steery pen, which gives it four extra point nine. So I'll try it. So I'm uh, drinking the cedar water. It's actually really good. It's got like a sweet taste to it almost like something's in it and I like sweet so I'm gonna keep drinking it 